This is the way you can treat people the way you want to be treated. Just laid it all out for you, and I hope you get something out of it. Hi folks, welcome back to my next video. This is the third video of a series about, uh, the first one was about uh, dispersed camping and what that means and land ownership and so on. What does it mean when you say I own public land and what does it not mean? The second one was the first section of the Ten Commandments. This video is about the final Ten Commandments of dispersed camping. So let's look at them now. The Sixth Commandment, uh, the common courtesy, treat others the way you want to be treated, is respect other people's camp. And there are so many ways we disrespect it. When you come into a new area, don't sit up right beside another guy. Uh, just think about it this way. In your home, you don't want people to invade your space. We all have a personal space around us. And we, and we have boundaries, just kind of this, we get a, a yucky feeling if you stand too close to me. Um, I get a yucky feeling. We have a, we each have a, it's, I believe it's genetic, it's written in our DNA, to have this need for a certain amount of space around our persons, around our camp. Don't invade other people's space. How? Don't camp too close. Don't, you know, if there's a huge desert, don't camp 20 feet away from me. Go camp a couple hundred feet away from me. Add a zero. Add a couple of zeros. Be 2,000 feet away from me. In the desert, you can do that easily. It's harder than the National Forest, but you can always add a zero. Don't camp 20 feet, camp 200 feet. Control your dog. My dog is great. My dog is wonderful. But he, every morning, I know he's going to go off and go and beg at everyone's camp. In fact, my dog is so friendly, he will jump right in your rig and ask you to pet him and beg him. He'll stick his nose under your hand and want you to pet him. Uh, and that's invading your space. So whenever I camp, I think about the people around me and is it too close that my dog will go and invade their space. Maybe you have a big dog. Maybe you have a mean dog. And my dog comes to you, and my dog's perfectly friendly, will never hurt anything, but your dog is big and mean and will defend its camp, which is what you have a dog to do, and will kill my dog. Uh, and then you'll feel terrible because your dog killed mine. I'll feel terrible because my dog is dead. And I am 100% in the wrong. A big one is firearms, and and you would think this is common sense. I was in uh, I was in a camp just outside of Slab City. We had a gorgeous camp. There are very distinct rules that say you can't camp within a you can't shoot a firearm within 150 yards of a campground or an occupation occupied site or a developed human site. You just can't do it. That's the law, and and rightfully so. So I mean, not not. 50 feet from us. This guy stops, pulls out his gun. There's an abandoned dumped car. So he's going to shoot into the car. So he starts shooting into the car. Well, it ricochets and we literally have bullets flying through our camp. We all went out there and started screaming at this a-hole. And we said the words. We said many words. And he was. Uh, don't shoot anywhere near anyone else. And yes, the rule is 150 yards, but add a zero, add two zeros, add three zeros. Don't pull out a firearm anywhere near anyone else's space. If they have a dog, their good dog's probably gonna be terrified of it. If nothing else, just respect each other, folks. Don't invade their space. Don't cut through their camp. And that really makes me angry. People that just drive right through my camp or just walk right through my camp. You're, you're, you're crowding me. It's a big area. Don't, <laughs> what goes through people's mind? I can't even imagine it. Uh, just don't respect people's space and privacy. It's, it's public land. I can go anywhere I want. You don't own it. You can't tell me not to go on it. Yeah, but you can act like a decent human being, can't you? Is that unreasonable? Just act like good, compassionate, kind people. Don't invade people's space. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's all. Don't shine your lights. Uh, don't aim your car into their campsite and their tent and turn on your lights and use them to set up your camp. Uh, why are you in there in the middle of the night that close to them setting up a camp? Think ahead. Think of other people. Uh, and if you got, go somewhere else where you can do it without invading other people's space. Noise and light, don't inflict that on other people. You got a big diesel engine, you've taken the mufflers off so it's as loud as it possibly can be. You got a Harley. You took the, even the pathetic mufflers that come on them off and now it's just this horrible noise. Everyone hates you and curses you when you go by. Why you want that in life, I don't know. But they all do. 
don't do that. Don't start it up and at four in the morning and, and, and go off for a sunrise photograph. Just treat people with respect. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Now the seventh commandment, the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated them, is fire management. This was nearly my whole job in, in the campground when I was a campground host for four years. And the Forest Service was big into this. If they came into my campground and drove around and there was a smoldering fire that was unattended, I was going to hear about it, and rightfully so, because that's how you burn down uh, national forests. That's how you burn down cities and kill people is you leave unattended fires. Never, never, never have a leave an unattended fire. If there's any smoke, any smoldering, any heat, it's, it's a fire and you can't see the flame, but it's in there. Uh, you never leave a fire unless it's dead out and dead out isn't throwing two shovelfuls of dirt on it. That didn't put it out. There's coals alive underneath there. This is something I saw. I literally saw this with my own eyes. There were a bunch of hosts, so we all went around to see this because we'd never seen anything like it. This was in the Sierras. The Sierras uh, get rain in the spring and the fall and it's bone dry all summer. The fire had gone down, found a, a root, followed the root up and come up 20 feet away and it just spontaneously caught fire. That's why you never leave an unattended fire. You get it out, you pour water on it, you make sure it's all the way dead and out and drowned. And then uh, that can't happen. It won't follow the fire out because you've put it dead out. That's why you have to be there to make sure it doesn't spread. A log doesn't fall out and roll off and catch the grass nearby on fire. That dried grass is tender. It like it it will go off like that. And that's how all these fires are happening out west is all this dried grass is so tender and leaves and needles. It's just a, a, a fire hazard ready to go off. So fire management is extremely important. Now what can you burn? Now the national out in the desert BLM you should not burn local stuff. You should bring in your own firewood uh, the, the desert needs all the organic material it can get and if we come out here and burn all the organic material, all the dead organic material, there won't be any for the next generation of plants. There has to be organic in the soil for things to grow. Uh, they don't need much out here but they need some and if we burn it all there won't be any. So uh, it's nearly always either of the law or just uh, respect for the land not to burn local land, local materials on the desert, out in the desert southwest. Up in uh, the National Forest, it's a little different story. You are allowed to burn the four D's, and I want you to learn these. Four D's. It's down. It's already down and it's dead. If it's dead and down, you can burn it. But there's more to it than that. It needs to be distant. It needs to be farther away. If you burn everything right around the campsite, it will be denuded of living things. And I'll tell you what will happen is it will become a dust bowl. And every time you take a step, especially in the Sierras or sometimes in the Rockies too, um, it will be a dust bowl because there's no more organic material to hold the soil together. There's just dirt. And so distant, go off a distance, bring in the firewood. And finally, the final D is dinky. It needs to be small. And I saw this all the time. People would get these huge logs and uh, four feet long, uh, 10, 12 inches across, and lay them in, and they, we, we had a name for them. We called them push logs. They'd put one end in the fire, and as it burned down, they would push it in. It's a push log. Well, that's fine, except that that fire isn't going out. And when you pour water on the fire itself, you're not gonna get the fire and the, out of the core of that log. It's in there and it's burning. So the next guy comes along into your campsite and sees this great big log across the fire. And he thinks, I don't want this here. I brought my own firewood. So he rolls it off into the trees because he doesn't want it in the side. He'll trip over it in the night. And so now we've got this log out on the trees and it's got a core in the core of it. It's got a spark and that spark and a big wind comes up and fans that spark into the flame. And now we've got a fire because you used push logs. So don't do push logs. So the four D's of burning wood are dead down. Don't ever cut down anything alive. Don't burn green wood. It's a terrible experience anyway. Dead down. Don't cut down a tree because it's dead. Um, distance away away from the campsite and dinky. It's got to be small enough to fit inside the little fire ring. It's not enough when you leave to throw a couple of scoops of uh, shovelfuls of dirt on top. You gotta drown it. The fire must be drowned. Pour the water in, scoop it over, pour more water in, gallons. You're needing gallons of water. Uh, almost always you need a permit. And one of the questions they ask for the permit is, do you have enough water to put out your fire? Do you have a shovel to control it, to stir it? Uh, dead now, it's gotta be dead and down, drowned. Eight, 
wildlife, don't, allow, don't harass wildlife. Uh, my dog chases. And I was in a campground once in Moab, Utah. I wasn't a campground, I was a dispersed camping. The rabbits were so thick, I've never seen so many rabbits. The first day he brought home a rabbit dead. The next day he brought her home a rabbit dead. And I said, man, there's so many rabbits here. I, and, and I could hear him chasing them. So I immediately put him on a, uh, I shouldn't even allow those two to die. But I put him on a leash and he was never off leash again. They were just this huge amount of rabbits. And he would just go out and kill them in cottonwoods or cotton button. And they were cottontails, which are slow, stupid rabbits. I don't know how the cottontails have ever survived. Uh, but he was killing, he was going to kill them all. And so he had to go on a leash. Don't allow your dog to harass uh, wildlife. Don't approach them. Uh, don't don't hassle or chase around or allow your dog to chase around cattle. So respect the ranchers. Uh, they they have paid money to use that land to run their cattle. They have permission to do it. So uh, don't hassle the cattle. Don't hassle the ranchers. Like I said, the uh, the ranger the rancher has every right to pull out his gun and shoot your dog in most states, many states out west, if he is chasing cattle. Another big thing with wildlife is keep a clean camp so you don't call in accidentally wildlife that leads to their death. And this is especially true of bears. You all know these stories. Somebody who leaves food out, attracts in the bear, the bear becomes a problem bear, gets used to getting free food from campers, and then the bear's dead. So when I was a campground host in the Sierras, I would have people who would not follow the rules about a clean camp. I'd call the ranger. They were posted everywhere, and they wouldn't even use the bear boxes. And so uh, I'd call the rangers. The rangers would come out, and I saw people cite it uh, because they would not keep a clean camp. That's going to lead to the death of wildlife. Uh, well, your little dogs are, are a meal for a coyote. Don't call in coyotes to kill your dogs and eat them. Just be aware that we're borrowing the space of the wildlife. This is naturally theirs. They have the first moral right to this land over us. Just treat the wildlife with respect. Don't approach them. That's especially important. The ninth commandment uh, of the golden rules of compassion and treating others the way you want them to be treated in dispersed camping is food and water disposal. The big thing is your gray tanks. Never dump a gray tank. It's illegal. You'll get it signed. Don't let them leak. So with your gray water, if you have gray water in a tank, you're never allowed to dump that because that puts a concentrated amount in a very small area. Never dump your tanks. It's against the law, you'll get a ticket. Uh, and it's bad for it. That concentrated amount of material in one small space is bad for the land. It's unhealthy. You should know it's wrong to dump 30 gallons of gray water full of food and soap in one place. It's bad for that one place. Now, if you are using a bucket to do your dishes, that's fine. Uh, you know, a, a, a dish pan, that's perfectly fine. Strain the food particles out and then take them home. To take the water outside and fling it in a broad area. You're not going to damage anything. Use biodegradable soap, especially for your showers. You can take a shower outside, just use biodegradable soap. You're going to use two, three, four, five gallons for uh, a shower, washing your hair. You know, you're just not going to use much. That much on one space with biodegradable, and there's no food particles there. See, that's one of the big problems is they rot, they decay, they, they bring in uh, other bugs and critters and falsely feed them. Finally, <laughs> seems like after forever, we are at the 10th commandment. The 10th commandment of, uh, of dispersed camping on public land, the golden rules of treating each other the way you want to be treated on when you're out camping. And it is very simply controlling your animal. And really, we've covered all of this uh, you should pick up their poop if there are other people around. Don't allow them to run freed and invade other people's spaces. None of us want that. Don't allow them to chase and kill wildlife. Uh, you know, if there are rabbits out here, they get almost no water. They just get water through the, what they eat. And if my dog chases that rabbit, uh, he comes home and I give him water, but that rabbit has expended a lot of calories and water running away from my dog. Now, if he runs this runs into that same rabbit the next day, he expends that same amount of water and, and, and calories. And if that happens two, three, four days in a row, that, that rabbit can simply die of, mal, of not having enough water or food. Uh, and my dog just keeps coming home and I feed him and give him water. So control your dog. Don't let him just chase rabbits around. Keep a clean camp so that you don't call in predators. And so uh, that, that's your cat, that's your dog food too. Uh, your dog food will bring in uh, kit fox. I've actually had kit fox come in, so don't leave dog food out. Don't. It'll bring in coyotes. It'll bring in bears. It'll bring in mountain lions. Don't leave your food out uh, for your dog or your pet because that will be harmful to to the wildlife in the long run.
the biggest one of all is barking. I camp with someone who bark, whose dog barks all the time. Man, if your dog barks all the time, get a do get a bark collar. Put that thing on them, and you can set the sensitivity. When it barks a certain height, it shocks them, and they stop. They'll stop. Don't be the person with barking dogs that everyone in the camp curses you. Don't do that. Uh, control your dog's barking. Fighting. If you have a mean dog, my question to you is why? Um, none of my dogs... My, I haven't had issues with my dogs fighting. I wouldn't own a dog that had an issue. If I thought my dog was at risk of hurting another dog or of uh, hurting another person, I'd put the dog down. I mean, you just can't have that. Uh, if you come out here with a mean dog, shame on you. Uh, you say, well, I'm going to control him, but you can't. The leashes break, chains break. Uh, other dogs approach by, by not knowing it's mean. Uh, other people approach not knowing it's mean. Uh, don't have a mean dog out here. Don't have a barking dog out here. Don't have a mean dog out here. Just don't do it. It, it isn't right. I'm sorry. I know that's going to make offend a lot of people, but that's the way it is. Just don't do it. So there you have it, folks. I've talked on and on and on forever, and boy, I just about talked out now. Uh, so this was the end of the, the series, the third video, uh, the first being about... Uh, uh, what does it mean to disperse camp? Who owns the land? And what don't does that mean? And what does that not mean? The second one was the first section of the Ten Commandments of Disperse Camping, and this was the end of the series of three, the final commandments of the Ten Commandments of Dispersed Camping. So if you got anything out of this, I sure hope you did. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you.